Hello, my friends. Samarilis here. We're going to continue on with the second part of the grim fate of ending Four Cinders. Okay, so overnight, the shady character overheard the prince and Peralt discussing the masquerade ball, and then Gloria got yelled at by Carboza for not seeing the or making sure that the wood got chopped. And then now we're having our chat with Sophia in the kitchen. It will be nice having someone help me with dinner for once. How are you gonna take out all the ingredients we're going to need? Why me? Isn't it obvious? I hardly step foot in this place, so naturally I don't know where anything is. Naturally? That doesn't mean you can, can't help with the preparation, though. I don't really have a choice in the matter, do I? There's no way you can prepare dinner in two hours alone. I'll be, just as much, I'll be in just as much trouble as you if it's not done. Mother isn't forgiving towards anyone. I figured that much out myself. Now, here are all the ingredients. Yuck, the stench is unbelievable. Are they rotting or something? No, this is just how vegetables smell. They do grow in the soil, you know. Sure, but I can't believe you actually live with this odor. I bet sometimes you must feel like a rather large carrot yourself. Or a beetroot, maybe. That's very funny, Sophia. Besides, it wasn't exactly my own choice to move in here. I used to have a proper bedroom before Gloria took it. That's interesting because in the chat with Tobias, he Im or she implied that it was the girls who decided that she should live down here. Of course, how could I forget? Still, you should be grateful. They say that harsh conditions help to build character. You're bound to become a diamond here while poor Gloria softens with every passing hour. Can you give me a break for once? If that's how it's going to look, I prefer to risk Promos' anger and prepare the dinner alone. Oh, fine. Don't be so uptight, sis. One glory in this house is one too many. So, what was it like before we moved in with you, anyway? I'm gonna say, why do you care, Sophia? Why do you suddenly care about my life? I wouldn't say I was particularly care, but it's just so dull in here. Isn't it better to have something to talk about? If you'd rather peel potatoes in silence, that's fine with me. I didn't mean to accuse you, it's just that the question seemed to have come out of nowhere. I was expecting an insult, not a legitimate question. It's a new feeling. And what makes you think I wasn't setting you up for an insult? You are so bitter, Sophia. <laughs> is, that, is that really all it was? You're always so bitter and cold. Congratulations for noticing. Would you like a commendation for it? What a defensive response. You must be really hurt inside to answer that way. No one happy would be like that. I never claimed nor pretended to be happy. That's more glorious thing. Honestly, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be. What do you mean? Your life doesn't seem so complicated. Get nice things and complain. I don't complain as much as you, and I'm a slave in my own house. But what would you know about that? Right. What would I know, hmm? Sounds to me like it's your turn to talk about your life. Well, there's not much to say. That can't be true. It's obvious that a lot happened to you and Gloria. You wouldn't be like this otherwise. Besides, you said you wanted a conversation, so tell me about yourself. Fine, but don't say I didn't warn you. When we were children, we lived out in the countryside. Our house wasn't as nice as this one, though. Our father was a military man. He got himself killed in some war, and that left mother a widow. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't be. I hardly even saw the man. When he was around, he was like a complete stranger. Not a proper father at all. His death meant nothing to us. What about Carmosa? It must have affected her. Maybe that's the way she is. That's why she's the way she is now. <laughs> was that supposed to be a joke? Mother Mom didn't care about him any more than we did. And why did she marry him? Well, why does anyone get married? For political gains. <laughs> For riches and status, mainly. It's like signing a contract or making a business partnership. One of the few ways a woman can gain anything these days. Well, well, I guess you can be pretty smart sometimes. Yes, that's exactly it, isn't it? It's the reason even a worthless mouse like me will eventually find a husband. It's all about status. Carmosa comes from a poor family. They had a titled nobility, but they'd lost most of their riches and splendor. The only way for her to advance up the social ladder was to marry, and she was ambitious. She married an officer who was relatively rich and had a lot of accolades. She probably planned ahead even there. For all I know, she chose a man she would probably die in battle so that she could marry even higher later. How can you say that? That's such a cruel assumption. 
cruel. It's not like she killed him. He would have died anyway. She just wanted something more out of life. It's still a cold thing to do. Cold? Sure, it's cold. It's business. I don't see what's wrong with it. Mother's not dumb. She did what she had to do. There's not much room in this world for women with ambitions, so you take what you can get. So back then, was your life as bad as it is now? Worse. What? How so? Well, you weren't around. Uh-huh. Listen, if you're not around, who do you think becomes the victim? Mothers always needed a scapegoat, and Gloria would do anything to please that woman. I'm not as pretty, smart, or ambitious as them. So naturally, she humiliated me, and Mom didn't disapprove. And now that I'm here, they no longer target you. Is that it? That's exactly it. Mom and Gloria have a new scapegoat, and my life is finally a little better. Oh, I see. So now that you're no longer tormented, you choose to torment me instead. Of course, nothing personal, but it's either me or you, and I certainly won't be a victim again. Besides, you should be grateful. Didn't your father shield you from the real world too much? Well, now you get to see exactly what it's like. That's the way of all things. You're either the hunter or the prey. And as long as Mother and Gloria focus on you, I can go back to being my own worthless self. You are so mean, Sophia. So you're just as cruel and calculating as Carmosa. You let someone else suffer for your own personal gain. I never claimed I'm any better than them. If anything, I'm worse. You're a broken, bitter, and evil girl. Oh, please. So? That's hardly news. Why does it matter one way or another? Ah. <laughs> I don't understand how you can be so empty. Can't you see that you're responsible for most of your own suffering? And what would you know about it? Nothing. You lived a perfect fairy tale. If you went through what I did, you'd be the same. Empty and broken. You're wrong, but I'm sure you'll never understand that. I've had enough of this. I've done enough work. You can handle the rest of the dinner, can't you? Well... You don't really have a choice. I'm leaving. Fine, have it your way. For a girl who wastes her life away in this kitchen dreaming of better days, you sure can be self-righteous. And for a girl so cynical and angry with the world, you sure look a lot like a self-made victim. And I suppose that whole conversation between us was pointless. Good luck with the dinner. What is wrong with her? <laughs> I can't believe we actually had that conversation. That was definitely unexpected. I think I need some time to think it over. The meal is nearly done anyway. All that's left is to get one of the servants to cook the rest right before it is served. I really need to get out and gather my thoughts. Everyone is busy, so I'm sure no one will notice if I sneak out. All right. The main hall is empty. No surprise there. As I thought, everyone is busy right now. I don't have much time before dinner, but I'm sure I could sneak out and be back in time. All that talk about my mother reminded me that I haven't been to her grave in a long time. It might be dangerous to sneak out during the day, but I don't know if I'll get another chance. So I'll just have to move as quickly as I can. All right, time to go to the cemetery. Oh, I don't even remember how long it's been since I last visited the cemetery. Mother's grave isn't hard to find. It's guarded by a statue of an angel crying gracefully. Father's idea. Looking at how much pain the angel is in, it's clear that father took mother's death very badly. I can't bring myself to look away from the statue. I'm sorry, father. The grave must be in terrible condition by now. I haven't had time to care for it. Wait, the grave is clean. Not just clean, but polished as well. Someone must be caring for it. Yeah, we never got resolve on, um, where Cinder's father is buried. We only ever go to the cemetery to see uh, Cinder's mom. Step away from the grave. Who's there? I've had it with all of you grave robbers. Folk like you have no shame. What are you talking about? I'm not a grave robber. Of course you aren't. And I'm the... Uh, hold on. I know you. You're Carmosa's stepdaughter. I am? I suppose you know Carmosa. No, Carmosa. Of course not. But I sure know you. Well, I guess you have an advantage over me then. I have no idea who you are. You don't know? I live in the town. Folk there call me Madame Guide. Madame Guide, as in the witch that everyone talks about? So you have heard of me. The stories they tell are an exaggeration, though. 
those half-wits label anything they don't understand as dangerous. Even more so, seeing as I'm a woman who's smarter than they are. I suppose it frightens them. There's Madame Guide. Although it doesn't stop them from running to me any time, they have a problem they can't fix. Personally, I prefer the term wise woman. It's a lot more appropriate, I think. So, you're not a witch? So you're not really a witch? No, I never said that. Only the stories about me have been exaggerated. Besides, some people consider it magic when they find their way back home from drinking all night. It really depends on your perspective. Well, even in gossip, that's gotta be a grain of truth. The only truth is that I'm intelligent, independent, and I take care of myself without a husband. If the town folk want to call that witchcraft, so be it. It makes their own lives so much simpler. True, but still. Why are you here anyway? You scared me when you shouted at me. I was just visiting an old friend. I was on the way back from picking some herbs in the forest by the lake. Oh, I've heard that the forests and the lake are special. My father used to tell me that they're magical. And we're talking about magic again. I can't help it. The atmosphere here is so mysterious. It does feel as if this place is magical. Do you believe in magic? I will say not really. Not really. I love hearing stories about magic, but they're no more than stories. People just call things magic or fate if they don't understand them, but there's always a logical answer. Things like medicine or astronomy used to be considered magic at one point in time. I see. That's all? You're not going to add anything? Why should I? It's not my duty to change anyone's mind, especially if said person is already certain. So you are being ironic, or do you agree with me? Your reasoning is as good as my own. Whether I agree or not won't change the truth, will it? Sometimes the answers are less important than the questions. Perhaps you would like to come visit my shop the next time you're in town. Tomorrow, maybe. Maybe. Is there any reason you're inviting me? Do I need a reason? Perhaps it's merely that I like you. Or we could talk about your mother. Oh, wait! You knew my mother? Of course I did. Who do you think has been tending to her grave all this time? It surely wasn't you. So you're friends with my mother. There, there. Your questions can wait for tomorrow. I'm tired and I need to return home. Shouldn't you hurry home as well? You'll be in deep trouble if Carmosa discovers you're gone. How did you know that it stuck out? Who knows? Maybe I saw it in my crystal ball. Or maybe it's just that I know Carmosa wouldn't let you wander around the woods on your own. I really want to see you tomorrow, but it won't be easy. Carmosa usually keeps a watchful eye on me. Well then, you'll just have to think of something, won't you? You won't get anything out of life if you don't take a few risks. I guess so. I'll try to come tomorrow. Excellent. I'll see you then. Take care of yourself. That was certainly an unexpected meeting, but what a character. I definitely want to speak with her again. For now, I'd better just concentrate on getting home. Magic or not, the witch was right about one thing. If Carmosa finds out I snuck out, I'll be in deep trouble. Okay, we will go back to the residence. Hmm, all clear in the main hall, and I don't hear anyone screaming my name. Looks like I made it back in time. Oi, pardon me, ma'am. I was just on my way out. Hey, I know you. You're the man who was with Tobias last night. Keep your voice low, Muslim. I'm trying to remain incognito here. What are you even doing here? Oh, nothing important enough to bother you. Just merely boring business stuff. Is that supposed to be a joke? I'm going to say, please tell me! What business? Please tell me what you're talking about. Sorry, but I swore in my honor I wouldn't breathe a word of it. No one else will know. You can trust me. I'm Tobias's friend, after all. Sorry, but I ain't telling. Good boy. Not a single word? Now I'm even more curious than before. I could ask someone in the household if they know anything about this guy. Carmosa is certainly out of the question, but maybe one of the sisters? Then again, I can never tell if they're on my side or not. 
It might be best to play dumb and see what happens. I'm going to ask Gloria. Maybe Gloria will know something. She always tries to make Carmosa's business her own. I'll go look for her. Oh, where is that stupid girl? I thought for sure she'd be sulking in here. I don't sulk, Gloria. Oh, there you are. I've been looking for you everywhere. Dinner is about to be served. You're needed in the kitchen. I was just washing up. I saw a strange man in the front hall a moment ago, though. Do you have any idea who he is or why he was here? I might, but why would I tell you? It's clear that Mother wants to be discreet, so you certainly won't need to know. Oh, so what you really mean is that you have no idea, right? Oh, I know enough, but I have no reason to tell you. You think you can speak to me with disrespect, then turn around and ask for my help? It doesn't work that way, I'm afraid. Feel free to languish over it as much as you'd like. I have better places to be. I'm gonna say fine. <laughs> fine, you can take your precious secret to the grave if you want. Maybe I will. I certainly wouldn't share it with an impertinent child like you. You don't have to be so high and mighty all the time. We get enough of that from Carmosa. Why make it worse? Oh, cut the oppressed rebel out. You'll get more respect if you behaved more maturely. This conversation is over. I expect you to be in the dining room in a few minutes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have better things to do with my time. Right, as always. I'm so worn out. Of course, Carmosa would order me to help the servants wash the dishes. I wasn't much more than a servant during dinner either. Unlike the servants, I don't get paid though. Honestly, I'd rather they don't even invite me to dinner. Picking over the leftovers is better than waiting on them. At least I had something to occupy my thoughts while I did chores. A lot happened today. First, there was that talk I had with Sophia. That girl has too many issues to work through, especially when it comes to her self-esteem. The fact that she keeps pushing me away doesn't help either. I know she's had a rough life, and I know she's been hurt, but it's like she's given up on herself. If she doesn't want to change, there's nothing I can do about it. I don't think there's any chance of us being friends. <laughs> Still, the talk with Sophia is nothing compared to meeting Madame Guide in the cemetery. What a woman. She's fascinating, but I just can't figure her out. She might look imposing, but she doesn't scare me. She feels familiar and trustworthy. It's clear she cared about my mother, otherwise she wouldn't be tending to her grave. I should visit her in the town as soon as I get a chance, at least to thank her for keeping mother's grave clean. And then there's the most mysterious event of the day. That weird man coming by the house. He was with Tobias last night, and now he's back to see Carmosa? Something must be going on here. I wonder if Tobias knows why he came. Whoever that man was, he sure gets around. Hmm. I guess I'm a little confused about timeline because I assume that Carmosa didn't actually want to go to the ball and forge tickets until she knew that it was a masquerade. But she wouldn't have known it was a masquerade until today. And that would really would make it a very tight timeline to get the dresses for the girls. Well, I guess that makes sense because she was gone for that entire day. Or for two days, rather. So maybe that was the timeline. I wonder why she was sending off that necklace, though. Like, was it just to, like, get money? Maybe Tobias is more innocent than I first thought. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's just selling all of, um all of the possessions that Carmos is trying to trying to get rid of from like the study and from Cinder's father and stuff so that they can have money to survive. Maybe that's why Tobias has a good opinion of her. I wonder what he was doing here. Things around the house have been so strange lately. Carmosa is acting rather suspicious as well. I wonder what she's hiding from the rest of us. So many questions in just one day. This might be my big chance to finally change my life. But I'm too tired to think about it right now. After everything I've done today, I'm feeling so worn out. I can barely stand. I had hoped I'd have time to read a book before bed, but I need sleep. Maybe I'll have more energy tomorrow. Okay, and with that, I'm actually going to end it out here. Next episode, we're going to have Carmosa leaving for two days. I'm probably going to skip the majority of that if the dialogue is going to be the same, but... Um, or at least nothing major changing. I know Gloria and Sophia hate me now, so <laughs> I'm sure the flavor text there will be different. But 
Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and that you come back for the remaining parts of this. I uh, hope you have a great day. Remember to be kind to yourself and to others. Goodbye!